Hi booktube, Sarah here and welcome to my channel. Today I am coming to you with another weekly reading vlog. This is for week 30 and this is going to cover July the 20th, I believe through the 26th. So today is Monday, it's the 20th and I am sitting in front of my bookcases sort of um, the light because it's later in the day is really coming through there and um, causing some weird <laughs> some weird glare going on. So I'm back sitting over here. Yes, my Harlequin shelves still are not properly organized. I really need to get on that. Um, I've just been lazy. I should really start to try and do that tomorrow. Part of the thing was is that I wanted to get another bookcase first so I could organize other things, but uh, that hasn't happened yet. So I might as well just go ahead and organize these shelves behind me so at least it looks a little bit nicer. So sorry about the kind of a, a mess back there. But as I like to start off these vlogs, I am going to talk about the books that I'm hoping to read this week, fingers crossed. Last week was only three books. I think I have a goal of nine books this week because it is the 20th and I have only finished, I've read less than half the books that I wanted to read this month. So I'm going to try and kick it into high gear for the last couple weeks of the month and actually week in a bit and see whether or not I can get everything done. So we shall see. But anyway. I did finish a book today, so already we're off to a good start. Um, it's Monday and I finished a book, so yay me. Um, and I thought I would talk about that first and then I will get into what I'm currently reading and then share with you guys what I'm hoping, the other books I'm hoping to finish this week. So this morning I finished listening to Beard Science by Penny Reed. This is the third book in the Winston Brothers series. I love this so much. I gave it four and a half stars. I talked about this book in my last vlog, so the plot of this one is our two main characters are Jennifer and Cletus, and Cletus is my favorite. I, of course, have read the first two books, and I fell in love with Cletus just listening to him, you know, making appearances in the first two books. I was like, yay, he's like my favorite. And Jennifer is the banana cake queen, so she works at her family's bakery like 80 hours a week. She does not get paid. She is dressed a certain way, has her hair dyed, um, you know, very much that 1950s, um, leave it to beaver type mum. Um, that's the way she's portrayed in the book, like the way she's dressed up to look in my, like from what I understand, that's how I pictured her in my head as I was reading it. And her parents really don't seem to care too much about her, but more about her appearance and the amount of followers that she has on social media because she makes these famous banana cakes and she has someone from New York, some talent scout out looking for her. And she's kind of over the whole thing. She doesn't know, like she's never had to think or do anything for herself and she's 22, so she's young. Um, but she's super adorable. And Cletus is just a doll. He's a number of years older than her. I want to say eight or nine years older than her, I think. And um, they're just so adorable together. So anyway, she finds out something about Cletus without getting too much into it. I don't want to give away too much of the plot because I went into this one not knowing anything about the plot and she um, kind of blackmails him into helping her out. Um, she wants to find a husband. She wants a husband. She wants to have, get married and have kids. And um, so she blackmails him to help her. And, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, so he agrees to, to help her out, to help her change a bit who she is. And one of the first things that he asks her to do is change one thing about yourself every day. So on like the first day, she changes her nail polish from a pale pink to a burgundy. And I just, she's just so delightful. And as much as I was invested, and I mentioned this in my last vlog, as much as I was invested in the story of Cletus and Jen, I was so much more invested in Jen's relationship with her parents and how she got out from under their thumbs and how she finally learned how to stand up for herself. And I thought it was fantastic. And I absolutely love this book. This series is just such a flippin' delight. I, I mean, I, I, as I mentioned uh, last week, I was telling my mom about it and now she's listening to the first book in the series. And um, I'm like, there's seven books. She's like, really? <laughs> so yeah, I highly recommend this series. If you are a fan of contemporary romance, this does get into the spicy, onto the spicy side quite a bit. I would consider it to be sizzling, um, you know, but it's still like, it's absolutely delightful and so well written and the characters are just, oh, I absolutely love this series. I think it's fantastic and I encourage everybody to read it. So that is the first book that I finished. So that was on audio. 
and I've already started listening to it. I'm almost three hours into it. I had a lot of like, I was sitting here knitting. You can see my blanket over my shoulder this morning. So I started another book for Christmas in Julyathon, and that is Christmas in Mustang Creek by Linda Leon Miller. This is the fourth book, I believe, in the, what's it called? The Brides of Bliss County or Country? And T no, County. The Brides of Bliss County by Linda Leon Miller. So I'm listening to this one on audio, as I said, and it is about a couple that used to date. Um, it's not like we had a backstory because this is the fourth book. This was like, I, I'm assuming we don't know anything about these characters because I was not at all lost. So at one point years ago, they used to date and now she, her name is Charlotte, but she goes by Charlie, is back in town because her, <clears throat> her elderly aunt who raised her is now living in a home and the house has been left to Charlie. And she actually just recently lost her job with a big advertising firm in New York City. So she comes back to, to the small town and she's going to look after her aunt. Of course, it's Christmas. And it just so happens that the guy that she was dating in New York City, whose name is Jax, is also in town because he has been offered a job at the local vet clinic. So he's a veterinarian. So the two of them are kind of thrown back together. You know, it's that... It's a it's a, a second chance romance, but also I feel like it's almost a um, what's the trope they always call it the single bed trope, you know, where two people are stuck in a snowstorm and they're in a hotel with only one bed and oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? But it's almost the same thing, but on a slightly bigger scale with the fact that these two people are stuck in the same small town together over Christmas. So yeah, so so far this one has been really delightful. Um, and then the other book that I have just started. Um, is His Country Cinderella by Karen Rose Smith. So this one I was not on my TBR for July, but it got added. Something else got pushed out so I could put this one in because there is a movie coming out on Up Network, I think, this Thursday, but I think it's going to be streamed live on Facebook through Harlequin, and it's called His Country Christmas. I think that's what it's called, His Country Christmas, but it's based on this book. So I wanted to read the book first and coming out this Saturday, you guys will have already seen it by the time this vlog is done, but I plan on doing a page to screen or a movie to book, whatever you want to call it, video talking about what I liked and disliked about the adaptation. So I, I figured, you know, obviously I have to read the book first because I've not read this book before, but what I'm, I'm only about a chapter in, in, but so far what I'm gathering is that it's a single mom and her name's Jeanette and she um, has a young son. Uh, four and a half year old son and she meets a man whose name I cannot remember right now sorry and he is a country music star but something happened and he has stepped out of the limelight and he's kind of living as a recluse and it's going to be their relationship so I'm very very excited as I said you guys will have already seen the video going up on Saturday I'm really looking forward to doing it and so far I mean I've read Karen Rose Smith before and she's absolutely fantastic and I'm really, really looking forward to finishing this one up. I'm thinking I should probably get this one done tomorrow because they're not terribly long. So outside of that, the other books that I am hoping to, whoops, that I am hoping to finish this week. So just let me see here. So the first one we have here that I'm, uh, these are in no particular order, is Hold Me Cowboy by Maisie Yates, another one for the Christmas in July-a-thon. Uh, this is a desire novel and these are relatively short. I'm actually gonna be listening to this one on audio. It's available as part of the Audible um, Escape Package, so I'm looking forward to this one. And then we have, oops, did I skip one? Um, I'm really enjoying using this tablet, by the way, because it's a lot smaller to hold up. I'm also plan on, planning on finishing in, in, I can never say this word, Instatable Hunger by Yara St. John, I believe is how you say it. This is a book in the Seven Sins series, and it's a Harlequin Desire novel. So I'm looking forward to this one as well. This one will be on ebook. This is an eARC copy that I have from the publisher. Also an eARC copy from the publisher I will be reading is The Best Man Plan by Jackie Burton. Can we just talk about how gorgeous that cover is? Oh my God, her dress and the puppy dog. Gotta love the puppy dog, right? <laughs> so I'm looking forward to that one. I have read the first book in that series. It was the novella. It was a novella that came out the tail end of last year called something in mistletoe I cannot remember now but it was a really cute like cartoony cover really bright pink with like a cartoony cover but I really enjoyed that one Jackie Burton is fantastic she's a great author um another e-arc that I have I'm trying to get to a lot of NetGalley books <laughs> right now you guys 
I have the Cowboys Claim by, by uh, Nina Crespo. I do not believe this is part of a series, but it is a Harlequin Special Edition novel. So that one should be fantastic. And then this is a, a Net Galley book, but I did, uh, because it's already been published, I was able to grab the audiobook from Scribd, and that's The Seaside Cafe by Rochelle Allers. Yay, I am looking forward to this one. What a absolutely perfect summer cover, right, guys? Oh, I love it. And is that it? Nope. Uh, this last one, and this is not an ER copy, but this is this is the one that you guys voted on for me to read from my Harlequin Anticipated Reads from last month, and it's Witness on the Run by Cassie Miles. So yay, I'm very much looking forward to this one. It takes place in New Orleans. Um, so I have a lot of Harlequin books, which are the category romance for those of you who are participating in um, the Summer Fling next month. And there is the one prompt on there to read a category romance, most of which I've just talked about are category romances. So stay tuned for my reviews this week if any of them catch your eye. And if, you know, any of them sound interesting to you, you can go ahead and pick one up for the Summer Fling for next month. But this one, this is the intrigue. These are romantic suspense. I do love these very, very much. So yeah. So there are my reading plans for the week, you guys. I'm going to do my best um, to... Um, update you guys every day like I was uh, last week and um, you know because I do plan excuse me um, I do plan on finishing nine books this week so hopefully every day I will be coming to you with an update on a book that I finished <laughs> here's hoping fingers crossed and then I think that will leave me something like five books to finish the last few days of the month so let's see if I can do it uh, now that everything is kind of quieted down a little bit so, so far on, a, on the update on Georgie, as far as I know, he has not been adopted yet, but um, I'm still hoping I will let you guys know if there is any change to that at all. Um, and yeah, so let's hope he gets adopted this week and let's hope I have a good reading week and that everybody else out there has a good week and um, I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye guys. Hi guys. Happy Tuesday. It is a bit later, which is why the lighting is not the greatest. It is after nine o'clock at night. I just finished doing the live read with me, uh, or read with us, I should say, for ro the other girls on Romance Tube, or the other people on Romance Tube, um, and I had a lot of fun with it. Um, I hosted, so that was super fun. It's the first one I hosted. It was a little nerve-wracking. I've never done it before, but it was a nice dipping my feet into the water for Saturday um, for doing the uh, kickoff live show for the Summer Fling, which will already have happened. <laughs> <laughs> by the time you guys see this video. So, um, not much else went on today. Uh, nothing much to share with you guys. Um, the only exciting thing is, is that I got a TV. <laughs> um, when my husband and I moved in here, my mom um, offered to buy me a TV because we had one for the apartment and it's a 55 inch and, um, it, uh, it's in the basement. Um, Garrett took it and he uses it in the basement. And so I didn't have one up here and originally one was going to go up in this room and then we moved the bed around last week in our bedroom just to kind of give us a bit more space and um, I realized that there's this one area this one wall area across from the bed that would perfectly fit like like a 32 inch so I mentioned it and my mom's like okay so we went out tonight and we got a TV and my brother came over right at the very beginning of doing the live show and him and my husband installed it <laughs> so it's on the wall right now and I'm super happy because now it means I can lay in bed and watch booktube and read and all those fun things. So I can be extra lazy. Um, so yeah, that makes me very, very happy. Uh, so anyway, um, <laughs> being lazy makes me happy. Who knew? So um, that's about the only exciting thing that happened today. Um, oh, oh, Presley, our, the gray cat that uh, we still have, he had a vet appointment today. And the vet has put him on a diet as well. So we were joking because Gorn's on a diet as well from the same vet. So we said we're starting a cat weight watcher, <laughs> cat weight watcher meetings at our house. <laughs> so yeah, it's it is what it is. He's he's fluffy. He's he's nowhere near as chunky as Goran. He's just fluffy. So yeah, but reading wise, I got another book done today, you guys. Yay! And I anticipate having another one finished before I go to bed. So that's three books, and it's only Tuesday. So I'm doing far better than I was last week already. So if I can keep up this momentum. I can finish the books that I want to finish this month. I can actually finish my TBR this month, which would be super fantastic. So um, today I did finish um, Linda Lael Miller's Christmas in Mustang Creek. Oops, sorry, that's really, really bright. Hold on. Give me a second here, you guys. Um, 
Let's see if this is any better. That's a little bit better. Yeah, so sorry for the glare and all those fun things. But yeah, Christmas in Mustang Creek by Linda Lael Miller. This is, I think, the fourth book in the Brides of Bliss County series. Um, and this was a super cute, super cheesy Christmas romance. I uh, read this for the Christmas in Julyathon that I am co-hosting. And um, this one this one was on my TBR. It was on my want to read list. I must have picked it up um, on on uh, ebook for a, you know, like a daily deal or a monthly deal or something like that. But I ended up listening to it on audio through the Audible Escape package. And Jack Garrett narrates it. And he narrates all of Linda Lael Miller's books, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, like I said, this one just had all the cheese factor. So it's about a woman by the name of Charlie and a man by the name of Jax. And they dated when they lived in New York together. And then they split up. And she ended up moving back home to, um, to this small Montana town that she grew up in. And he just so happened to get a job in the same town. So it's over the holidays. The two of them are back in town together. They dated before, so it's like a second chance romance. And then there is a character named Mrs. Claus, and it's K-L-U-Z-Z -Z or something like that, Claus. And um, she kind of makes an appearance in this story, and she uh, kind of sets a lot of things in motion. So there's a bit of a mystical, magical, Christmassy, Christmas spirit kind of element to this. Like I said, it was super cheesy, but it was so much fun. Um, really, really adorable. I ended up giving it four stars. I really enjoyed it. So if you are looking for, you know, a really fun Christmas story, I recommend this one. It is fourth in a series. I think it's the fourth and last book in the series, but I was in no way confused into anything else that happened. You obviously run into characters that have already had their stories, but it doesn't factor into this one at all, and you can enjoy it for what it is. Um, the other one that Actually, you know what? I'm just going to mention that I'm reading this one, but I'll talk about it tomorrow because I'm literally almost done it, but I want to wait till I'm actually finished it. And that is His, his uh, Country Cinderella by um, Karen Rose Smith. So I'm reading this one now. I think I have about three chapters left on it, so I'm going to finish this one up tonight. And like I said, I will give you guys an update, like my full review on this one tomorrow. So I'm not going to talk about it right now. I'll talk about it tomorrow. But yeah, so that's really all that I have to share with you guys today. Um, like I said, not much else interesting really happened. And I will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye, guys. Welcome to Cat Nursery School. There's literally a window right beside. But the TV is much more interesting. Hi, Bean. Hmm. Winky Bean. Hi everybody, it is Wednesday. It's the 22nd of July and it's later, not quite too, too late in the evening. It's just after eight. Um, clearly I'm coming to you from a different location. I'm in my bedroom. <laughs> Did I mention in my clip yesterday that I got a TV in here? I'm super excited. So yeah, I am relaxing now. It's been a long day. I have got my, um, my knitting here that I am working on. I've got a book that I'm reading. I've got Law and Order that I'm going to turn back on. It's a very filling evening. So you are sitting precariously on um, some stuff sitting on the bed. So sorry if it's jiggling just a little bit. But I do have a book that I finished last night that I want to share with you. And um, a tiny, tiny book haul. Just two books. So, um, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I went up north. Not, up, not like far up north. But about an hour or so away from us um, to Port Perry with my mom and my aunt today. We went and had lunch. And then we went into Port Perry, like into the town, and there's this bookshop that I really loved up there. And they've since moved location. They locations. They used to be in a barn of sorts, like that kind of an idea. But now they're actually in the basement of another store. So I went over there, and the whole store, it's three for ten dollars, period. Like there's no like I mean, there's some antique books, which of course are a different price. But generally every book, regardless if it's like a Harlequin, you know, category romance to a hardcover three for ten dollars so I didn't want to spend a lot in there because it is a bit pricier than what I'm used to spending at other places I would maybe next week I'm thinking I might go back to that um that uh, Christian um Bible not Christian Bible 
the Christian Charity um, bookshop. Um, oh, hi, Logan. Or Bernard. Oh, gosh, I don't know why I reverted to calling him Logan. Those of you who've been watching my channel for a while probably don't even, I don't even think we had Logan anymore. Like, he passed a while ago. But um, Bernard just always, <laughs> always think it's Logan. <laughs> I don't know why. Why this is happening just in the last, like, since we moved back here. Um, and Logan never really lived here, but I don't know. It's weird. Anyway, that's a total side tangent. So I would like to go back to that charity shop maybe next week. So we shall see. But for now, I thought we were already downtown, like in Port Perry. So I thought, why not just go to this bookshop and have a look? And in the car, my aunt, who's not, she used to be a really avid reader when she used to take the subway or the, the transit to work every day. But she doesn't really read that much anymore. And <laughs> cattail. And um, she she likes the more paranormal. So I know a lot of people that I watch on BookTube always talk about Nalini Singh and how much they enjoy her work. So when I was in there, I grabbed a book for her, a Nalini Singh book. It's one of her Lords of the Underworld or something. There's, that's Bean. You can, hold on. Hi, Bean. Hi. <laughs> I know some of you like seeing him on camera. So um, he's just going to just sit beside me. There, we'll, do, we'll just do that. That sound good, Bean? That works for me. So <laughs> anyway... Um, so I picked up one for her. I have no idea if it was first in a series. I didn't bother looking. She doesn't care. She's going to try it out, see what she thinks about it, and go from there. But I got myself two books. So the two books that I grabbed. First one is a Debbie Maycomer, and it is Thursdays at 8. And this one looks really cute. I do not know. Um, Brie and I on, um, on Voxer were chatting. We didn't know if this is part of the, what do you call it? Um the Blossom Street series or not? I do not know. Let me see. Does it tell me? Blossom Street. It doesn't list it here. Christmas books, The Manning Family. Gosh, she's written a lot of books. Um, it doesn't state it here, so I don't know to be completely honest. But yeah, I picked that one up. It's not in bad condition, but um, I do like these. It's a gorgeous cover on that too, so I really like it. Oh, and uh, Bernard is, is now sitting down, <laughs> so I can move this back. The other one I got, which is in much better condition, is Serenity um, Harbor by Ray Ann Thane. I believe this is the fourth book in the, um, in the um, uh, Haven Point series. Excuse me, sorry. My mom's cell phone's going off, I think. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited to have this one. I believe it is the next one that I need to read, and that cover is just stunning. Wouldn't you just love to be up there, like, for summer vacation for, like, the whole summer? Just to sit in the fall, too, would be lovely. Up until the snow flies. Because I assume that it would probably get pretty, you'd probably get pretty snowed in. But, you know, given the right amount of food and good Wi-Fi, I'd be fine. <laughs> and, and books. I, I would need books, too. But, you know, with Wi-Fi, there's always Kindle. So, you know. But, yeah, isn't that gorgeous? I just thought it was so pretty. So, anyway, on to my book review. So, yesterday, or last night, I finished His Cinderella his Country Cinderella by Karen Rose Smith. Um, I talked about this one briefly. I didn't talk about it yesterday because I knew I was going to finish it and just be able to talk to you guys about it now. So I gave this one three and a half stars. I did not love it, unfortunately. Um, there were just a few things in it that really bothered me. Not really bothered me, but bothered me. Um, that made it less than perfectly enjoyable. So for one thing is that he is supposed to be this huge country superstar. Like huge. Like I'm thinking Tim McGraw, you know, like everybody regardless if you listen to country music or not you probably know who tim mcgraw is one married to faith hill so as a country music fan you know i'm like i of course know who he is but anywho this guy's supposed to be very very famous and what happened was is at one of his concerts it sounds like a girl like at the back like after his show there were all these people crowded around his bus and a young girl, like a 16-year-old girl, ended up getting trampled when the crowd kind of tried to get too close to him. And the family is now suing him because he was negligent or something. I, I don't know. I just, I don't know lawyer-type stuff, but that just doesn't, it's a very unfortunate accident, don't get me wrong. But to blame, like, the per, I get to me it would be more like you blame the venue or... I, I don't know, going after him personally, and the tabloids are going after him. So he's gone to Thunder Canyon, Canyon in Montana, this small town, which is where this series takes place. And he's kind of staying way up north in this cabin, and he doesn't want to be bothered. He only comes into town once in a while. But the thing that gets me is that our main character, Jeanette, his name is Zane. She has no idea who he is, which is fine. You know, she doesn't listen to country music. She wouldn't necessarily know who he was. 
but in this town, you're telling me nobody reckon nobody like they say, like he does say that it's like, you know, hiding in plain sight where if you just like he just grows out his beard and wears a baseball cap, people don't recognize who he is. But if like at first glance, maybe you're right. But if you keep going into the same shops that you're thinking that maybe somebody might go, you know who you look like? So, yeah, the whole trial thing and him being sued, I was kind of like, mm, maybe. But the other thing that really bothered me was actually Jeanette. Um, also, the relationship is very insta-love, which drives me crazy. It's one of my least favorite tropes, if you will, in romance. And um, so I didn't particularly enjoy that. But um, she refused help from anybody. She's a single mom with a four and a half year old little boy. And, you know, he just wants to help her. He just wants to make a phone call. He's not offering her a job. He's not offering, you know, at the beginning he offered to get her hired back to the maid service that she got let go from. And he was going to pay her salary. Like he was going to be the one to pay the maid service her salary so she could keep her job. And, you know, I understand turning that down. That's a little much. But all he wanted to do was like make a couple phone calls to a couple people and get her in for an, in like get her in for an interview. Like, and she even refused that. And I'm just thinking like, okay, but you want to do better for yourself and it's, Almost every job now is word of mouth, mouth, excuse me. It's because somebody knows somebody else, like you have a friend of a friend and Hey, the place that I work is hiring, you know, let me drop off your resume for you. Kind of an idea. But, um, yeah, she was very, very stubborn. So at the end of the day, I mean, it was, it was entertaining enough, but I didn't love it. Now the movie is going to be on tomorrow night on, um, uh, Facebook. I think it's a Facebook launch party or something like that. So I'm going to watch the movie. Now the thing is with the movie, it takes place at Christmas. Now, his trial takes place in December, but this isn't an overtly Christmas story. Like, Christmas might be mentioned in passing or something like that, if I'm remembering. I just read it last night, but already some of the details are escaping me. Um, in terms of, like, if, if Christmas is mentioned, it's 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 not like they celebrate it. It's not like it's like a Christmas-focused story. But yet the movie has been made. It's called His Christmas, His Country Christmas, or His Christmas Cinderella. I can't remember. But anyway, I'm watching it tomorrow, and I'm going to do a book-to-movie um, video for you guys on Saturday, which will already be up by the time you see this video. So, um, so yeah, so those are my thoughts on that one. Unfortunately, didn't love it. And the thing is with Karen Rose Smith, I really like her work. I have read her before and she is really, really delightful. So this one was just one that I just didn't happen to enjoy. And, and it's as simple as that. And why am I now in the Google play store? I don't want to be in the Google play store. Sorry. I'm trying to, uh, to bring back up the other images here. So what am I currently reading? I started two new books today. First one on audio that I only got about an hour or so of the way through is The Seaside Cafe by Rochelle Allers. Sorry, that's really blowing. It's a really blue cover. But this is more of a women's fiction contemporary romance. And it's about a group of women who meet and join and start a book club. You know, it's book one in the book club series. And the, the first character that we've met or the first character that we met is actually about 46 years old. So these are more mature women, which I really like. Um, so yeah, I'll give you more of an update on this one tomorrow. And then I also just started, which is so far I am really enjoying. I'm about four chapters in is there's the cover, the Cowboys claimed by Nina Crespo. So this one is super cute. It's about an actress and her name is Chloe and his name is Tristan. And, um, she is an actress vying for this role as like some space horse trainer of some kind. So her um, manager thinks that she should go to a, uh, a dude ranch of sorts or like a, a stable and spend six weeks there and learn all about working with horses and things like that. So she has gone to this guy's stable. He doesn't really want her there because he's like, well, I'm really busy and I don't have time to babysit some like stuck up actress. So that's where the story is going to go. And so far, I am really enjoying it. Like I said, I'm only about four chapters in, so I'll give you guys more of an update tomorrow. I'm actually hoping to have this one finished tomorrow, so we shall see. But anyway, guys, that is all that I have for today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed. Um, I'm going to go back to doing some knitting, law and order, and getting a bit more reading done. But I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Hi, friends. Happy Friday. It is the 24th of July. And today, if you saw my Friday read, you know that today is my wedding anniversary. It's later. It's not too, too late. I think it's just after 7 at night. And I am home, and Hubby and I went out for dinner. And it was nice. Um... The, the city just opened stage three. Uh, well, our region opened stage three. So restaurants and bars were back open to limited capacity seating. We thought for sure we weren't going to get in and get a spot to sit, but there was no problem. I think a lot of people are being still being very cautious and staying home, which was fine by me because I got to go out and have dinner for my anniversary. So 
Um, and we went to Eastside Mario's, which is in our mall. And then we went into the mall and I bought some books. So, uh, little mini book haul, um, <laughs> uh, that I have to share with you guys. Um, actually these two I bought earlier and I just didn't get to show them to you yesterday. So sorry about no clip yesterday. I had a migraine all day long and I just was not feeling well. So I did not get a lot of reading done either. So I didn't bother popping on here. Um, so I am still reading. I didn't get through, I'm not going to get through as many books as I anticipated this week, but that's okay. I am still reading. Um, oh my gosh, what am I reading? Uh, the Seaside Cafe by Rochelle Allers. I'm a little over halfway through that one. I'll definitely get that one done tomorrow. So I'll have that one to update you guys on. And also The Cowboy's Claim by uh, Nina Crespo, which I will also have done tomorrow. So no update, no reading updates today, um, but they will definitely be um, reading updates tomorrow. But I mo ma mainly, excuse me. Hi, Bernard. I mainly came on here to show you guys my books. So Bernard's a little freaked out right now. Um, my niece is here visiting with Nan. She's staying overnight and um, he just doesn't like change. We had somebody else, um, our other cat, uh, Presley, his original owner, we've kept in touch because she had to give him and Georgie up, excuse me, because she was moving in with her boyfriend and he was allergic. So it was very, very hard on her. So we um, told her that, you know, and I kept in contact with her and how the boys are doing and I let her know, unfortunately, what happened with Georgie and that she's now kind of following his progress to see him get adopted elsewhere. And um, so her and her daughter came up to see Presley today. So already Bernard's a little freaked out about somebody different being in the house. And now that my niece is here, he just doesn't like people. He just likes his people. And that's about it. So he just came in here and I just wanted to make sure that he was okay. Because we were a little bit concerned before we went for dinner because he was under the bed and wouldn't come out. And that's unusual for him. It, that, not that so much as the fact that he wouldn't eat. We brought up his wet food and usually he gobbles that down right away. But he didn't even look at it. So... We figured it's probably because my niece is here, but that's okay. Um, so the two books that I got last week, um, one or earlier this week, a couple days ago, I ordered these from Amazon and um, uh, one of them is actually a sneak peek to my August TBR. So one of them is A Highlander in a Pickup Truck by Laura Trent Trentum. Now I have this on ebook as an e-arc from the publisher and I do plan on reading it in August, but I own the first one in paperback as well. So I'm like, I want to, the whole set because I love the first one so much. So I've now got this one and I'll be reading a physical copy of it in August. So I'm very, very much looking forward to that one. So it was the last copy they had in stock on Amazon. So I, I picked it up. And then the other one I got is A Recipe for Persuasion by Sonolia Dev. I have the first one in this set, in this series, I guess, called Pride and Prejudice and Other Flavors. And again, these editions are just absolutely gorgeous. I haven't read that first one yet, but I want to very, very soon. So now I've got the second one as well. And I think my friend Rainy over at Rainy Day Reads read this and she enjoyed it. Um, and I asked her because she's read Persuasion and I have not. And this is kind of a loose, loosely based retelling. And um, she said, you don't necessarily have to, but you might get a bit more out of it if you do. So that might be my plan is that because um, the first one obviously fo follows Pride and Prejudice, which I read last year, is I might do a reread of Pride and Prejudice and then read that and then read Persuasion and then read this. So, you know, so I kind of get a bit more, you know, I get a bit more out of it than I would have. So, yeah, but these are absolutely gorgeous. So then tonight, we, like I said, we went to the mall and Garrett and I took a little wander in the mall and <clears throat> they were having a bit of a sale at uh, Chapters Indigo. So the first one is, these were two for 15. So I found two of them very easily. And the first one is Summer of 69 by uh, El Ellen, Ellen Hildebrand. And I can say I've never read one of her books before, but I hear so much about them. I've heard, had people, people rave about them to me. Now, this one I believe is a historical fiction novel that it might be one that goes back and forth in time. So, I mean, two for 15, I just, I really like, it's a bit of a taller mass market. So it's not like a standard size mass market, if you know what I mean. Like, do you see how much taller it is? So yeah, but yeah, I am looking forward to this one. It sounds good. And I think that one will be a lot of fun to read. And then the other one that was the two for 15, I got the newest um, in the crew of Hunter series, Deadly Touch by Heather Graham. I do like these. The last edition came like this as well. And again, it's not quite the same um, size as a standard mass market. So if we put them up against each other, you can see it's a little bit taller and a, uh, quite a bit wider. And I kind of really like this. It's like having a floppy trade paperback, 
but just on a smaller scale. Do you know what I mean? Like it's that nice and floppy. I really like it. I, 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 I really, part of me wishes they would re-release the entire Crew of Hunters series in this edition because I would buy them all because it just seems like a perfect little size for your hands. Do you know what I mean? To like hold it. I kind of love it. So yay. So I got those. And then they had the table set up that were three for $10. And the first one that caught my eye was this one. And it is A Little Princess by Frances Hodgson Burnett. And this is the, what editions are these? It doesn't say what it is, um, but I really, really like the edition of this one. This is one of my favorite books. My dad first read this one to me. He bought me a copy of it when I was a little girl, and I and he read it to me. And it's about a girl named Sarah. Um, wealthy, uh, when wealthy Sarah Crew arrives at Miss Minchin's boarding school in London, she's determined to settle in and make friends. Charismatic and popular with a, a big heart and a love of storytelling, she seems to be succeeding. That is until tragedy strikes and Sarah must fight harder than she thought possible to remain both strong and kind in most circumstances, in the most difficult of circumstances. This inspirational tale of the significance of friendship and the power of imagination and the importance of preservance, uh, <laughs> I can talk, uh, be adored by readers of all ages. I loved, loved, loved this book and I really want to give it a reread. So maybe for middle grade March next year, I'll have to do it. Would, would you guys consider this to be middle grade? I think so, because I was, I mean, I think Sarah Crew in the book is like 10. 10 or 12. So that would be middle grade. I, I think it would be. So chime in in the comments and let me know. Um, but maybe I'll put this one aside to read for uh, middle grade March next year. Um, and then I got, I love these, you guys know, and I've mentioned these before. These are these UK um, mass market uh, or floppy trade paperbacks. This is the Cozy Coffee Shop of Promises by Kelly Hales. It just looks so cute, doesn't it? I just love, these make me happy. I, I have no idea what this is about. But I saw the cover and I'm like, yes, please. It just looks delightful and I wanted to read it. And last but not least of the three for three for ten dollars. This one caught my eye. It's called Hello Hollywood. And it is by Janice Thompson. And this is part of the Backstage Pass series. I love the cover. Is that not great? And again, a nice floppy trade. Um, and this one is about um, a woman who is a screenwriter for like one of the most popular shows on television, like a sitcom. So they bring in this Vegas comedian because the show is suddenly starting to dip in ratings. And now she's got to deal with this comedian who's like not the nicest guy ever and stuff. But I was just reading here on the back. Um, the, uh, the author is a seasoned romance author and former screenwriter. So clearly she knows what she's talking about for this book. So it just sounded really good. And I just thought, oh, why not pick it up? I, I you know, that's... I mean, I love going on Amazon. I love checking the library and things like that. But there's just something about wandering around a bookstore. And especially when you get to the sale tables and seeing books that just kind of jump out at you. And, you know, I mean, three for $10. This book was $3.33 technically. So, you know, why the heck not? It retailed for almost $20. So that's not a bad deal. But yeah, it looks super, super cute. So I will, of course, report back as soon as I do read it. So that's really all that I have for today's clip, you guys. I just looked down. Like, please tell me I'm filming. <laughs> I wasn't sure. But yeah, that's all I have for today, you guys. And I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye. Who's handsome? Hi friends, um, I am sitting in the car waiting for my mom. I just saw her, she's about to come out. But I'm gonna try and get some video, but just so you guys have some context, her and I are going to a drive in bingo this afternoon. So that's the video that you guys are probably gonna see next. Um, I'll talk more about it this afternoon when I do my afternoon clip because I did finish a book today and I wanna talk about it. But um, in case I get some video and stuff like that, just so you guys know where we are, um, we're in the west end of Toronto to do this um, and I'm super excited. So I will talk to you guys in a bit, bye. Hi guys, happy Sunday. It is the 26th, 26th of July today. Sorry for my um, little, you know, lazy looking appearance. It is Sunday and yesterday was a really crazy busy day and today I just need to do nothing and sit around, which is what I plan on doing. Um, some stuff kind of happened yesterday that really annoyed me in a way 
and um, I wanted to, of course, share that with you guys. Um, so, uh, first thing, um, yesterday, you probably saw the little clip, um, of me going to the bingo with my mom. I didn't get many clips after that initial little just chat, just one little video. We didn't win. It was okay. It was really hot. Sorry for knocking the table. Because we were in our car and it was like a heat wave going on. So we had the car running with air conditioning on. And it was about an hour and a half is how long the bingo took. It was six games. But it was very, very, like old school in a way like they had no way of being able to check cards um electronically which is what normally happens for those of you who don't go to bingo um you know if you win and you call uh the runner what they call the runner uh person comes over to your table and reads off a number in the corner of the bingo card and then the caller the person calling the numbers will just key that into a computer and all the cards are in that computer and they can immediately see if you have a bingo or not Whereas in this case, they had to manually call back every single number on the card, like all like the B, I, and you know what I mean? So that's what took a little bit longer, but I mean, it was fun. It was an experience. Mom and I said we wouldn't do it again, um, unless they did it at night, uh, because that would probably be a lot better, um, cause it wouldn't be as hot, right? But with everything starting to slowly reopen, I don't anticipate it. Now we are playing the at home bingo this Thursday, which is much nicer in the comfort of our own homes. So that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, so uh, we were doing that yesterday and because we were out in the sun for so long, I was exhausted last night and I did not get on here to record, you know, an update yesterday, even though I did finish two books yesterday morning. Um, but then kind of, um, for me personally, um, I had an electronic meltdown <laughs> yesterday. So, uh, before we were going to go to bingo, I thought I'd come upstairs and I'd play around on my computer for a bit, listen to an audiobook, and I could not connect to the internet. And this has happened a number of times over the last year. Like for no reason, the internet Wi-Fi will drop off my laptop and, you know, usually I just have to restart the computer and it pops back up again. And I figured the laptop is six years old. It's just finicky. It is what it is. So yesterday I tried rebooting it like three or four times and nothing was working. So I called Garrett up and I'm like, can you help? Cause I have no idea what I'm doing. Right? So he was looking for the Wi-Fi card. I guess in your computer, there's a Wi-Fi card that will connect you to the Wi-Fi. And that card was completely gone. Like Garrett said, it's fried because it's not even showing up in the background or on my hard drive or, or anything at all like that. I don't know technically what he was talking about, but it wasn't there. Um, as he explained, it's like the battery of your car, the battery died, the, you know, the, the Wi-Fi chip card died. So for my purposes, the laptop was useless <laughs> because um, I kind of need the internet. <laughs> it's kind of what I do. Um, you know, most everything I do, I, I require the internet for on it. So we were trying to figure out a workaround and I was talking to my mom and I'm like, oh, you know, this is just such a pain and blah, blah, blah. And she offered very, very sweetly and she got me a new laptop yesterday. So yay, I have a brand new laptop. It's sitting in front of me. Um, so we were joking saying it's my Christmas present for the next two years and my birthday present, <laughs> which I am fine with. <laughs> so it's, it's a nice one. It's not a huge brand name. I can't remember the name of it. ASUS is the, the, you know, name, but it was like, it has a terabyte of memory on it. Garrett said it was good. Garrett came with me to get it. He's like, this is good. This is what you want. You know, for your purposes, it's not a gaming laptop. I don't game on it or anything like that. So I got home and then we went to bingo and then I came back and the door magically opened and a cat came in. It always creeps me out when I see that out of the corner of my eye. So anyway, um, I started playing around with it, of course, got it all, you know, I had, I had plugged it in before we'd left so I could, you know, get it all charged up for when I got home. So my old laptop came with a editing software called power director and it was kind of free with the, the system. I could have upgraded it, um, but I didn't, I only used the basic and that's the program that allowed me to put pictures up here. And the other program that it had, of course, cause it was six years old was windows movie maker. The new laptop does not have power director and windows movie maker is no longer a thing. It's, it's no longer produced. So I am majorly bummed and I'm trying to find a software that is not ridiculously expensive. The power director one, which I don't, I, I like it, but it's like a hundred dollars us to buy. And I'm sorry for my purposes, I'm not purchasing something like that. Um, because it's not a, an, uh, an Apple product. Of course I don't have, 
I can't do iMovie on it or anything like that. So if any of you lovely people out there have any suggestions for any sort of reasonably priced, I don't mind paying for it, but I'm not paying through the nose for something that has all these features that I really don't need or don't use. I need something to fade, um, you know, clips back, uh, you know, from one to the other, like a transition kind of an idea. I don't even care if the pictures can't go up because I'm now showing them to you guys on my on my device and you all seem perfectly happy with that. Um, I just, I, I, will YouTube allow me to, to do stuff like that? Because the thing is that because of my vlogs, I have to amalgamate a bunch of clips together. So that's why I kind of need something, but nothing like too high tech. Does that make sense? So in the meantime, what I'm doing, because my old laptop still is functional, I just don't have internet on it, is that I now have to do all my editing on my old laptop and then use an SD card and move it to my new laptop to then upload it to YouTube. So <laughs> I'm kind of glad I'm no longer putting the pictures here because that would just be a whole other step that I'd have to be doing. So yeah, it's, it's technology is a thing and it drives me crazy and it drives me crazy, but I love it and the, the same thing. So I've been working on this laptop for like since yesterday afternoon, trying to get everything put back on it that I had on there before. And actually in a way I said to Garrett, it's kind of nice because it allowed me to completely clean up everything. Like I said to Garrett, I'm not doing a massive move of all of my stuff over. The, the really cool thing. Oh, it's Goran who's here. It's Mr. Goran. There, you can see him. Yay, Goran. Um, is that there was a lot of stuff on my old laptop that I didn't use anymore, uh, you know? So I'm not doing a massive move over of everything because it's still functional. I can slowly do it. And most of my stuff I have backed up on the Google Drive. I actually pay... Uh, whatever the amount is every month to have a terabyte of space on the Google Drive and I upload all my pictures and I upload all my digital scrapbooking supplies and you know stuff like that all get uploaded to the Google Drive so I was not in panic mode that I was going to lose all of that information on my old laptop so that's I've had it happen to me before I think once you've you've completely a computer on you has completely burned out and you can't access anything anymore and you've lost a bunch of stuff you learn <laughs> to back that stuff up and it's gone the cloud drive or the google drive and that makes me happy so you know it is what it is but for programs and stuff like that you know i'm having to re-download stuff but i'm only re-downloading what i know i'm going to use so if i come across something and be like oh did i have that you know like and then i'll just figure it out right and it's kind of a nice way of starting fresh and like a clean slate on, you know, without a computer that's because my old one was so bogged down with so much crap that needed to go. You know what I mean? And that I just hadn't gotten around to to removing. So that's my whole story on um, on the new and old laptop. So that all being said, let's get into the two books. Sorry for the massive, massive glare on this. The two books that I finished yesterday. So you guys will have probably seen, um, I had a video go up yesterday, or Sunday, uh, the day I'm filming this, um, the How I Learned to Love My Kindle Fire video. So there was no opening and closing, like, um, you know, pretty image that I always have because I just wanted to get it posted. Because <laughs> it's it was in the transition period. So now I kind of know what I'm doing a little bit more on how I'm going to do this. And Editing today will actually be kind of nice because usually when I'm editing, I can't do anything else on my computer. But now that I'll have the two of them, I can be editing on the one and playing around on the other while I'm waiting for things to happen. So it's kind of nice. If I can keep the old one running for a couple years, just using it for editing, and maybe I'm going to try and wipe it of everything else, then it might be kind of nice to just have that editing computer. So anyway, all that being said, the two books that I finished yesterday were both Net Galley reads. So the first one that I finished was The Seaside, Seaside Cafe. I'll show you guys the picture in just a second. The Seaside Cafe by Rochelle Allers. Um, I ended up only giving this one three stars, you guys. It was not fantastic for me. I didn't absolutely love it. Um, bear with, let me get the picture up here. Um, do, 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 there it is. So, here it is. So, sorry for the glare. You know, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, three stars. Did not love this one. My biggest, biggest issue with this, and I was not the only one who thought this when I was reading through a lot of reviews that were on, um, that were online on, uh, on Goodreads, was that, um, is that too dark now? No, that's a little bit better. Um, was the fact that I did not like the main characters at all. The three women in the book club, like, because that's the whole premise of this story, without giving, you know, too much, because a lot kind of goes on in this book. I would definitely consider this one to be more of a woman's fiction, as opposed to a, um, um, 
a contemporary romance, even though there is a romance in there. So the whole thing is about these three women, one who lives in this small seaside community and the other two are on vacation for the summer and they start up a book club together. And then the uh, woman who lives in the community ends up having a romance. But the three women were so catty to each other. I, I thought, I just kept thinking, how are you people thinking that you should be in a book club together? You're awfully mean to each other. And like I said, catty and snippy, and they just didn't seem to get along. And I just thought, this is kind of silly. And it's not like somebody put a sign up and said, hey, come join the book club. They were all like, they met and were like, oh, a book club would be great. Also, this would be a great book if you really enjoy the classics like Jane Austen and stuff like that. Les Mis, because those are talked about a lot in here. Um, and as someone who does not read the classics, and maybe I took this as a different way, but I almost found it to be a little snobby that, you know, the way some of the main characters were talking, I mean, they, they were not downgrading, downgrading women's novels, like, or not women's novels, but romance novels or women's fiction. They said that those have a place as well, absolutely. But the way they just talked about, like, all the, um, the classics and stuff, almost as if you didn't read them, you are, you know, not that great of a, you're, you're not, a reader like a, you know what I mean so I don't know maybe me as someone who doesn't read classics read into that differently but you know I didn't hate it the writing was good and the plot line was good I just did not understand how these three women could possibly think that they could be friends and the ending of it was wrapped up like so quickly I expected like another chapter and there wasn't one and it was just this one wasn't for me sadly and I was really really hoping that I was gonna like it now this is the first in a series I will try the second book in the series um, and see what I think, but if I'm running into the same issues, that's probably where I will where I will stop the series. But I am going to continue to read this author because her writing is just fantastic. So the other book that I finished um, yesterday, I absolutely loved you guys, yay! And that was uh, bear with me here, um, right here. The Cowboy's Claim by Nina Crespo. Guys, I loved this book so, so, so much. It was utterly delightful four and a half stars. I thought it was just the absolute cutest book. So the premise of this story is about, there we go, it's a little bit better, is about a woman um, by the name of Chloe. And she is an actress. She's kind of a B-level actress. Um, you know, she hasn't been in any major movies, but she's been in, you know, some some movies. And she was on a hit TV show for a while. So she's up for a role in a new movie where she needs to know how to run a stable or work at a stable uh, with horses. And she actually has a fear of horses going back to her childhood to something that happened. So she ends up calling up the stable in Maryland or her, her um, producer, not her producer, her publicist does. And, um, not publicist, the woman, the person who would get her jobs. Why is that drawing a blank for me? One of you is going to post it in the comments below. <laughs> anyway, that person, um, signs her up to work at the stable for like six weeks in Maryland. And she's from, of course, Los Angeles. So she ends up going to the stable and she meets Tristan, who's our male lead. And he does not want her there because he's far too busy. And his cousin is the one who agreed to have her um, come and stay for the six weeks. And then the cousin takes off on business for like a month and leaves her with Tristan. So at first they kind of are very, it's very much an enemies to lovers kind of story, but then they end up falling for each other and it was just so sweet. I absolutely loved it. Um, I'm recommending this. I talked about this if you watched the live show that happened on Saturday night. I talked about this one in the live show. I just thought it was just a delight. And Nina Crespo, is. this is what was, this was my first book by her. This is the first in a series, I believe. It's not listed on Goodreads, but I believe it's the first in a series because the cousin story is next or one of the cousin stories is next. And I'm very much looking forward to it. But yes, I absolutely recommend that you check this one out. If you are looking for a book for the contemporary spot on the Summer Fling card, uh, the prompt card, I highly recommend this one if you like a good, um, a good down-home country family story. And if you're looking to, uh, you know, double or triple up on spots on the card, this also, of course, would work for um, Small Town Country. This would also work for an author of color. Um, so you could you know, check three boxes in one if you so desired. So yes, absolutely love this one. Highly recommend. So that was it for my reading this week, guys. I finished five books, which is none too shabby. I think I, my original plan was like eight or nine, <laughs> but clearly that didn't happen. But, but five is still good. Five is better than the week before. Um, I will slowly start getting back there. I have, I think, 
six books I want to finish by the end of the month. So we shall see how that goes. And, you know, I'll talk more about the books I'm going to read next week, of course, in the next vlog when I do that tomorrow. But as I like to end these out, excuse me, time for some iced coffee. Filming this a bit earlier so I can try and get all the editing stuff done <laughs> before, you know, um, just so I can try and get it done because it's going to take a bit of time. Um, so as I said, I, I like to show you guys my knitting at the end. So I did work on a couple other projects other than just the blanket this week. I'll show you the blanket last. So they didn't get a ton of love on them, but, um, you know, not a ton of work was done on these, but I got some done. So I'm working, I got some work done on my Harvest Cardigan by Tin Can Knits. Not a lot, you guys. That's where I was last time. That's where I am now. So I got like five or six more rows added to it. Rainy from Rainy Day Reads is also knitting this cardigan. We had started them at the same time. <laughs> She's on the sleeves because she rocks and I am lazy, um, but I'm also working on like eight different things <laughs> and the blanket is always my first priority every, every week to get all my squares added. So, um, so yeah, so that's just a little bit that I've gotten done. There's really not much to show you guys. Um, it's a free pattern from um, Tin Can Knits and it's going to be a lovely, lovely cardigan when it's done. Do I have the pattern in here? Oh, I do. So let me uh, show you guys the pattern. So this is all from adult to, or from, it goes from six, zero to six months in size to a 4XL size. And this is a free pattern. So there's the finished cardigan. Rainy's doing hers in white and I've got mine in the gray. But yeah, this will, this will be my third time knitting this one. Um, the first, first one I knit was for my grandmother. And um, then the second one I knit for myself, which turned out really bad. But I was still a relatively new knitter. So now, finally, I will have one for myself. Um, third time's a charm, right? So yeah, so there's that. The other thing I cast on this week was a new pair of... Oh, no, I've showed, I've showed you guys the socks already. So yeah, um, I think I showed you guys the socks last week. Oh, come on, yarn, get back in the bag. I don't want to, you know, get the zipper stuck in the yarn. Um, so living in this adorable uh, bag. Bling Your String Bag is the company name. Isn't that just so pretty? She's a Canadian um, bag maker. But I think I bought that one at the Toronto Knitters for like a couple of years ago. <coughs> so using yarn that I do not remember who the dyer is, um, but the colorway is called Amuck Amuck Amuck, which is a homage to uh, Hocus Pocus. And my favorite character in that movie, the one played by Sarah Jessica Parker, she's my favorite of the three sisters. I just think she's adorable. So the little witch, right? <laughs> that's where I was last week. So that's what I've gotten done. I'm about an inch away from starting the heel on the first sock. And yeah, so there it is. I love, again, the unintentional striping that it's doing between the orange and the browns. I think it's so pretty. So I'm going to have a nice new pair of Halloween socks soon. Uh, so I'm very happy with these. And the pattern that I'm using is um, Hermione's Everyday Sock Pattern, which is another free pattern on Ravelry. Um, it's It gives you the entire pattern, like how to do the heels and toes and all those things. But I just use the actual pattern part of it, um, which is on the first row, you knit three, purl one all the way around. The second row, you just knit. The third row, you knit one, purl one, knit two, and then continue that all the way around. And then the fourth row, you just knit around. So yeah, yay, I love it. Um, so let me just show you guys the blanket and then we're going to open up the minis for this week, which is very exciting. Um, let me put all the yarn back in this bag too. Uh, do, 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 do. So the blanket, the crazy sock yarn blanket, as I like to call it. Um, so I think I only had, yeah, just three squares last week and I didn't weave in any ends because I didn't, you know, I only put three squares in, so there was kind of no point. I'll do that when I start working on it this week. So that was the last one that I did. So I added in this purple right there, very pretty. This one, which I love, that kind of striped blue and black. And then this really, really pretty one. Very wintry looking, really happy with that. So another three squares in there. I have no idea what my total count is. I'll have to check next week and um, I'll give you guys an update on that. So let me kind of do my whole reiterate on the books that I finished this week and we will open up the minis. Come here. Uh, All right. So all of my uh, little envelopes here. Um, so let's open this up. And what was the first book that we finished this week? Oh, yes. Beard Science by Penny Reed. Oh, gosh. I love this one, you guys. Beard Science. Here we go. 
Beard Science by Penny Reed. So for those of you who might be new to my channel, um, I'm working on the sock yarn blanket and for every square, for every book that I read this year, I'm adding a square to the blanket. So I pre put in these, um, I make these little envelopes up with all of the book titles on them um, at the beginning of every month and I put them in a big bag and then as I finish um, each book I pull them out so then I can show them to you and then those are the minis that I add the next week if that makes sense. So Weird Science by Penny Reed. Um, I ended up giving this one four and a half stars. I just loved it. It is of course book three in the Winston Brothers series. Um, this was narrated on audio by Joy Nash and Chris Brinkley who both do a brilliant job on this series um, and the genre of course was contemporary romance. And ooh, we have a nice bright one, you guys. Look at that. That's really pretty. So again, as I always like to say, the yarn has nothing to do with the books. I do not find them to match the covers, anything at all like that. I am not, I don't give that much forethought to it. I just grab minis that I have on hand and I put them in the envelopes. So yeah, so there's this week's, or that, that one for Beard Science. And then I read um, Christmas in Mustang Creek by Linda Leal Miller. Um, I gave this one four stars. I thought it was super cute. It was super cheesy, super cute, but exactly what you want in a Christmas story. And it is book four, I believe, in the Brides of Bliss Country, uh, Bliss County series. It was narrated on audio by Jack Garrett. And of course, it's a contemporary romance slash Christmas novel. So it's kind of hard to read the writing on these, sorry. But what have we got here? Ooh, ooh, that's pretty. So this is West Yorkshire Spinners um, in the colorway Sherbert Fizz. Very appropriate, don't you think? I, like that's gonna be so neat together <laughs> beside each other. Very vibrant colors and then very muted colors. Very pretty. Oh, that'll be lovely. All right, then we have, uh, we had His Country Cinderella by Karen Rose Smith um, right here. I gave this one three and a half stars. Didn't particularly love it, but it was okay. Um, uh, it was a net galley read, but it was published back in September of 2011 and by Harlequin. And this was because the reason it was on net galley was because of the movie that was out on Thursday, uh, last Thursday, Harlequin put their movie out Facebook live event, uh, in conjunction with this book. So they re-released the book to net galley. I read it. It was okay. Wasn't spectacular. Um, it is the, uh, book number, I think three in the Montana Mavericks, the Texans are coming series. It is Harlequin Special Edition number 2137, and of course, another contemporary romance novel. So, um, open this one up. What have we got in here? Ooh, purples. Purples and lilacs. Very pretty. Almost like a gray in there too, right? Purples and grays and whites. Oh, that's lovely. Uh, and then we have um, the Seaside Cafe, which I just finished yesterday. Again, three stars. This was another Net Galley read, so thank you to Net Galley and Kensington Books for sending me an e-arc of this one to review. It was published back, uh, it was published in May of 2020. Um, book number one in the book club. I did listen to it on audio and the narration on this, guys, I have to say was fantastic. Um, it was by Sherry Peely, I believe. P-E-E-L-E -E 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 is how uh, her last name is spelt. And of course, this was, I consider it to be a women's fiction novel. So let's see here. Ooh kind of goes with the cover with blues blues and greens very pretty oh I like that a lot yay and then last but not least the Cowboys claim by Nina Crespo again four and a half stars another net galley read so again thank you to net galley and Harlequin uh, this one also came out in May of 2020 Harlequin special edition number 2772 and of course a contemporary romance and which is the last one that Ooh, this is pretty it's bright and it sparkles. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see the sparkle. Hold on. You see the sparkle? Oh, it's really pretty. I love it. That's gonna be fantastic, so yay. So there are the five that are gonna go into the blanket this week. Um, so anyway, guys, that is all that I have for today's video. Um, I hope that you enjoyed it. Um, again, let me know in the comments below if you know of any uh, software I can use for editing um, that is inexpensive. I don't know, I'm not necessarily looking for free. Um, I just want inexpensive. Um, and if you have any questions or comments or anything to say about this video or anything at all, just let me know in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. And until my next video, everybody, take care and happy reading. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, guys.